Hello, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I have a scrapbook layout for you today featuring the Backyard Bliss collection from Close to My Heart. Well, what's left of it anyway? You can see I just have a few scraps. I've done several layouts here on my channel with this paper pack, which I'll have linked in the description box below. But anytime I have pieces cut like this, I try to see if I can use them to create a layout before I do any further cutting. You can see this makes a nice uh, layout already. I'm going to bring in a sheet of pine cardstock. Let me get that lined up on my Versamat there. And then I'm thinking I could do something like this. I wanna make sure whatever margin I have here on the left side is equal to the margin over here. So I'm gonna go about one inch and using those uh, measurement lines on my Versamat makes that very easy. I have five photos. These are all printed to three by four. And that includes the white border and they're just snapshots of my garden. I like to get my coffee in the morning and just take a stroll. This was the haul from one of those particular morning strolls and then my cat toad loves to just hang out with me in the garden. It's just kind of our fun little morning ritual as I mentioned. And then here's some pumpkins growing on a trellis. So what I'm thinking is, I originally was thinking a design like this where I have you know, the photos which fit perfectly. And that's why I decided to print these to three by four because I knew they would fit on this pattern piece of paper. But then I have an extra. So I'm guessing I'm going to end up adding that with a flip flap, which will also give me room to you know, add the journaling as well. So I'm just going to place that. I like this one better. I think it shows my cat better than this one. So that's why I'm gonna put this one on top. She's walking through the tunnels with the shade cloth protecting the young plants. For my title, I know I want to use this particular stamp. I love this uh, word garden, and then you can add to it, you can find me in the garden, or you can say garden where love grows. So there's a couple different options. And then I wanna make a little seed packet, but we're gonna turn this into a shaker element. I created this shaker card last month and I really like it. So I thought it'd be fun to you know use this for inspiration for embellishing my layout today. You guys know I have to ink up my edges, so I selected the color Mocha. That is a featured color in this paper collection, so I know it's going to coordinate beautifully. This will just give it that little depth and separation, especially between the pattern papers. I must say, it feels really good to use up this entire collection and kill a kit, as they say. All the layouts I've created with the Backyard Bliss collection, I really am happy with how they turned out. Of course, I love gardening, so they were perfect for me, although I did use this collection for a non-garden themed layout as well. I can go ahead and bring my pictures back in. So let me get these lined up. I decided to go with one and a quarter inch on each of the left and right sides. Those two are gonna stack together. And then I think this one up here and maybe that one there because the tomatoes kind of counterbalance the orange pumpkins. I also have this scrap, this wood grain, and I want to add a little visual weight to anchor my photos. So I have a lot of, you know, vertical so I thought a little horizontal line would be a nice addition. I'm going to add some stamped embellishments. I'm bringing in my second verse mat. I'm flipping that over because we have that nice foam cushion on the back. I have a couple pieces of white daisy cardstock. I'm going to lay this stamp down on my mat and then pick it up with my block. That helps it stay true to shape. For my seed packet I know I want this in the color mocha so we'll get that nice and inky. Go ahead and give it a second to soak into the paper paper and perfect. For my vegetables, I'm going to be coloring those in with my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend, so I want to use an alcohol marker-friendly ink. I have the Intense Black ink. Get those nice and inked up and stamp them. I left enough room so I can die cut those out. And now I'm bringing in pine so I can create my title. Let me bump those out of the way. And I have this mounted on a block already and then we'll bring in the white daisy. Now really just take your time, get this nice and inky, move it around the pad, pick it up. I can see I missed a spot so I can go back and touch that up. And then again, always give it a second to soak in and you will get a better impression. To color my vegetables, I have the dull green blend. We have a coral shades and burnt orange blend. I'm starting with the coral shades and I'm going to color my tomato. Now down here on the bottom of the tomato, the artist has drawn shade lines. So that tells you this is kind of the darker area of the stamp. 
and I want my tomato to appear rounded. So you can see I'm following that curvature with the color rather than coloring straight up and down, if that makes sense. I'm starting with the darkest color and now I'm using flick-like motions to extend that with the medium. And then I'll go ahead and color in the rest of this tomato with the lightest shade in that marker. Just imagine where the sun is kind of shining on it from the upper right hand corner. And so your shadow is going to be on the lower left. And then you can always go back in and add even more of the shadows, which I will do here in a moment. But I'm using the dull green. I'm using the medium color to color in the stem of my tomato. And you don't need to get fancy. This is such a tiny little stem. And then we're going to use our white gel pen to put a highlight on that upper right hand corner. Doesn't that look cool? Now the burnt orange is a nice color for our carrot. And so same thing, I am using the darkest to kind of outline the left-hand side. We're going to extend that with the medium and then shade it all in with the lightest color. I'm pretty happy with my uh, color shade for the tomato. I think that's pretty spot on for a tomato. It's not too red, not too orange. Although I do have yellow tomatoes in my basket there. So, you know, there's purple tomatoes, green stripies. I mean, you name it. <laughs> so that's what's fun. You can kind of customize these to coordinate with your photos to really represent the story behind the pictures. I'm using dull green. I use the same method to color in the peppers and then we'll color in the little carrot top there. And we have some nice dimensional images. I went ahead and die cut everything out. I cut an extra piece to adhere those together. There isn't a die for the seed packet, probably because they would expect you to just cut it into a rectangle like a seed packet actually would be. But I wanted to just kind of highlight the shape of this uh, particular stamped image. So I chose to fussy cut it out with my scissors. But yeah, if you don't like fussy cutting, just cut some straight lines and make it into a rectangle. So to create our shaker, I chose a small circle and I cut out the center. I have a uh, papaya colored circle to back it. You'll need tape and a little acetate window. So this is made for a larger circle shaker. So I'm going to use that same circle I cut the papaya back with and trim that down so it fits my little shaker window here here. Remove the protective film and yep, that's going to work perfectly. So when you're adding glue, make sure you put it far enough away from the inside to allow for that squish factor because when you press this down, it is going to kind of squish it just a bit. Now this thin 3D foam tape, it's not thin, it's it's not, wow, it's the regular 3D foam tape, but it's the narrow one. As you peel off the protective layer, it is flexible. So you can bend this in a circle to go around your little shaker window here. So I'm just doing that and then I'll grab my non-stick microchip scissors to cut where the two ends meet and that will trap all of our beads inside, or in this case, our seeds. These tiny little bitty beads are not in the new catalog, but if they are still available, I of course will leave those listed in the description box below along with everything else I used in today's project. So just click that see more and there's all sorts of information down below the description. I want to make sure the top of the shaker is supported as well. We want it to be the same thickness. So I'm adding a little strip of that foam tape and now we have this super cute little custom seed packet shaker. I do wanna add some color to the word garden. There's these tiny little flowers, a watering can, lots of different elements on here. So to make sure it coordinates, I'm using the same coral shades and I'm just using the medium color. And now this is not alcohol marker friendly ink. I stamped it in regular um, water-based ink. So you do need to be very, very careful because when you color over that, you can kind of smudge the lines, but these markers have a super fine tip. So it's very easy to just stay within the lines and not go over them. I chose, let's see, that is true blue for the little bird. And then I'm using dull green for the leaves that are kind of growing on the letters in the title. And then there's a tiny little daisy. So I'm going to color that in as well. Let me just finish these little leaves here. I love that you can customize this again to coordinate with your 
photos. It's just so much fun to do that. So I have light yellow for the daisy, and then this is brown gray, and I'm going to add some highlights and coloring and shadowing to the watering can, and then just the base of the daisy. I like to use gray on white portions of the image just to make them look like they have a little depth to them. So here is our cute custom title. And as I mentioned before, I did cut an extra piece. I just want to give it a little bit of, you know, a little dimension and some rigidity there. So I'm going to glue those together. And to me, this is a lot easier than adding foam tape and the liquid glue allows you to slide those into place and line them up perfectly. I am envisioning my title right over the bottom of the photos and then an embellishment cluster right here. So that'll give us one, two, three. So I wanna have a third embellishment cluster up top, but I do know I want my tomato right here. And then these guys, I'm not 100% sure yet. This is the Buildable Tags Thin Cut Set. I'm going to create a tag with this shortbread cardstock here. Now, just a heads up, this Thin Cut Set does retire at the end of the month, so I just want everybody to be aware of that in case it's been on your wish list. Our seed packet is kind of getting lost on that busy pattern paper, so by adding a solid piece of lighter colored cardstock, that's really going to help that stand out. It gives your eye kind of a break, and you can take in those details a little easier. I have several flowers left over from when I created these, and these are from the Layered Florals Thin Cuts, and I used this image and this image and then the leaves, and these are also on the retiring list. So I'm going to add a little bit of this sapphire color. I always like to camouflage the transition pieces where elements meet. So we have our seed packet and our tag and the photo all kind of, you know, meeting together in the corner and the flower just softens that. We're going to counterbalance it on the diagonal up top and then I'll place another one tuck my little leaves in there. That's looking pretty good. And I think I'll draw that same color up top. I also cut from the tabs thin cuts, the short, same shortbread cardstock to draw that up. So I like to repeat colors and elements in each embellishment cluster. We'll add a couple leaves up here and soften that corner there. Perfect. And I think our carrot, let's put it over here because we have orange in the pumpkins, orange in the basket photo, and this will draw that orange color to the other side. So to continue my title, I have, you can find me in the, I'm stamping that in candy apple red, also a featured color from this paper pack. And we'll stamp that on the same shortbread cardstock. And then I like to use my little guillotine photo trimmer to cut these into strips. And then my little scissors to dovetail the end here. My title will read, You Can Find Me in the Garden, which is really perfect because I like to get my morning coffee and go out first thing and just stroll through the garden. And my little cat, Toad, she just is always there. She just kind of pops up randomly and we kind of stroll through the garden and have our little morning routine and she seems to really enjoy it as well. It's nice and cool and peaceful and I just love it. It's a great place to have your coffee. So this is a little sticker from the sticker sheet. It's like gardening hat and then I kind of thought I wanted to accent more of this papaya color just kind of subtly. I have it in the seed packet shaker window so I want to add it to a few more places. So I'm just tearing this you know inch strip of paper so now it's about half an inch and I'm going to slide that under let me grab my Cricut spatula this thing is awesome for lifting up your papers and I just need to lift it enough to get that underneath and I want just a tiny portion of it showing I want to draw that same papaya color up to the upper right hand corner now this matches the wood grain down here it says true bliss and I'm backing that with another papaya colored circle. The True Bliss embellishment is from the Flower Shop embellishments from the Core Catalog. It's subtle, but it's just enough of that color to really add a lot of visual balance to the layout. So let me get my little leaves tucked back in. And now this stamp is called Celebrate Life. This is an oldie, but I just, I don't know, I can't part with it. The little sentiment here says, these are the days. And I'm stamping that in sapphire ink on my little title. And I think it's perfect because that's how I feel about the garden. These are the days and true bliss. And I just love it. 
I printed my journaling directly on cardstock. I added a little zip strip and a stamped image, a little gardening trowel, and I'm gonna tuck this into my three by four flip flap here. And again, I want this photo on top. So I'll tuck that in and the adhesive flap will hinge over and open up and then you can read the journaling. I do wanna add a few enamel dots. Now these are the red dots and you get three sheets and it looks like I tucked a sheet of melon. That's not supposed to be in there, but you get three sheets and they're all in the red family kind of ombre colors and you get hearts, stars, and circles, and small, medium, and large. So there's really a lot of variety and they have all the color families. So these are super nice. I'm putting a couple hearts, uh, like a large one and a small one, in each of the three embellishment clusters. If you enjoy shakers, then you want to tune in to the Creative Design Team collaboration in September. They are focusing all on shakers for an entire week. So there's eight different designers, myself included, and we will be bringing you ideas on how to use shakers. There will be cards and layouts and all sorts of fun ideas to try. And if you are finding this video helpful and enjoying the content, I would love it if you would click that like button. Better yet, leave me a comment. I really enjoy chatting with you all. Here's some more videos to inspire you. Thank you so much for watching and spending time with me today, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.